Hello, welcome back to the fish locker out on the rocks. Now I've got a rod set up already. I like to get a rod fishing before I set everything else up. That way, if you haven't got a bait in the water, you're not going to catch any fish. I've now got one rod set up and I'm going to take you and I'm going to show you around, show you the mark that I'm fishing. I talk to you a little bit about like how I adapt my fishing to the mark and then I'll show you some of the rigs that I'm using. I fish two fixed spools. I've got a penafinity and a spin fisher. Now you can possibly see that I have got the reel seats set slightly offset so that when I have on when I have them on the tripod together they don't bang into each other. One rod that I've already got set out has got a pulley rig which is like that. There is a video on the Fish Locker Workshop channel showing you how I make the pulley rigs. I'll tag that into the description of the video and the other rig that I'm going to cast out in a moment is going to be one of my rassing rigs with a rotten bottom and you can see look it's got a little hook on the bottom there so that when it goes when it lands on the seabed that hook pops off and you're fishing on a weak link of 15 pound mono a little a few floating beads Again, there is a video on the Fish Locker Workshop channel showing you how to make that rig and explaining why I've adapted it in such a way to fish for wrasse. Now, if you're looking at this mark, I've arrived onto this rock mark. This one could be like any rock mark. Generally, it's rough. I'm here, I'm here just at low tide. I've got a bang on low tide. So not only do I know what I'm fishing into because I can see it because the water's gone, but also I find that fish feed on the flood. So I find that most marks that I fish will fish better with a flooding tide. This is no different. So if you can see the darker areas and the kelp there, that is rough ground. And then you can see it's quite pale out there. So it's rough ground in close and it's pale at distance. So a pulley rig will work well because it lifts the lead out of the way. And down in amongst all this weed here, Hopefully there will be some wrasse. Now I didn't actually bring any wrasse bait because I just thought I'll pick up, I'll put a couple of rigs in the bag just in case and then we'll chance our wrath. What I'm going to do now is if you can see on the ground here mussels are good bait, limpet are good bait. I'll pick up a couple of limpets and I'll show you how to use them for bait. But yeah, the bait on the other road is going to be fresh mackerel. I caught some fresh mackerel earlier on. And I'm going to be using that. Hopefully I'm going to be targeting things like uh, eels, rays, bullhus, maybe even a codling. Right, I've knocked a couple of three limpets off the rocks. If you're quick you can get them off with your fingers. If you're not and you knock them they really do what they'll do is they'll they'll clamp down really hard and you can't budge them. So you either need a stone to knock them off or you can kick them off. And inside you can just see there is a big foot. Just take your knife and all you do is you can kind of scoop around it a bit like you would get a grapefruit out you just go in all the way around and separate it from the shell just like that I've used them before for codling yeah, look, there's another one out codling, wrasse, whiting, pouting that type of thing usually if I'm fishing the down the side of a pier or down the side of a rock mark like this and all you'll do is, there isn't any real specific way to hook them onto a bait. They are nice and tough, so you'll just thread the hook through it a couple of times. And that's ready to go out. So, limpet, mussel, that type of thing. They are decent for catching wrasse. And I'm just going to just knock it out right into the middle of the rough stuff and just sit it with a tight sit it with the line tight to the rod tip because if you see a bite you need to get right on it you need to get hold of that fish and get it out of the snags otherwise it'll find a hole and it'll, it'll snag you up now that i've got two rods fishing what i'm going to do is i prep up other rigs in this spare time here now i'll do some preparation and i'll pre-bait some traces and i'll hang them up on the tripod or i'll tidy things away so that I don't lose any fishing time because if you if you look at it this way if you're fishing two rods and it takes you 10 minutes to change each bait and you change baits 
two times an hour. Instead of having two hours of fishing time for two rods, you end up losing 20 minutes each bait change, so you've lost 40 minutes. If you think about that over an entire session, if you if you change bait 10 times in an entire session, it takes you 10 minutes each time, you've lost 100 minutes of fishing time. Whereas this spare time here now, wind a rig in, clip a new bait on, cast it straight out, takes seconds. I'm going to show you really quickly, I'm going to knock up a couple of baits, I'll make a mackerel bait and I'll make a mackerel and squid bait. Using one of the fresh mackerel that I caught earlier, first thing I'm going to do is just take a couple of fillets off. So start at one end, go into the backbone and then along. Hand on top and all I'm doing is I'm sliding my knife down along the backbone. Turn it over and do the same thing on the opposite side and you're just sliding your knife along the backbone. Now these baits, I like to cut them into a diagonal. Now these pieces here, I'll use these for tipping other baits. You'll take, take a hook length off your rig winder. There you go. Take a hook length off your rig winder. These are 3 or specimen extras. And all I'm going to do is you start at one end of the bait and you go through, turn it over and then lace it right up the bait. I like to end with the hook coming through the flesh part because fishing like this, this is where the majority of the scent is being released from. So if I fold it up skin side out, not as much scent's been released. There's the first hook through. Take the panel hook, a couple of wraps around, and then through it comes. Like that. Then take your bait elastic and then give it a bit of a lashing. The main thing that you want to make sure is that you have both hook points well inside the bait and sticking out proud. You don't want to mask the hook point because if a fish takes it into its mouth and the hook point is hidden by the bait, you will strike into it and the fish will come off. It's the hook that catches you the fish. There you go. There's a mackerel bait. Both hook points proud lashed up nice and streamlined, ready to be cast out. The next one I'm going to make up, I'll make up a mackerel and squid. These are exactly the same in that all I'm going to do is I'll go through the bait three or four times. Slide the bait through so that the eye has gone through there, that way it's anchored in. Like that. There you go. We'll take a squid out. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a section of squid. Now you lash it together with the bit elastic, and that's a squid and mackerel combo. There you are. So those two baits now can be hung up on the tripod and they're ready to go. Well, the first bait change has resulted in this. A large female velvet swimming crab that is actually carrying a lot of eggs. Now considering that that bait was out there for nearly half an hour, 
it's not in too bad a condition. You can see all the eggs that she's storing underneath there. So yeah. Next bait change is going to be in 20 minutes. Half an hour, the baits are getting chewed. So 20 minutes from now on. This is the beauty of those pre-baited hook lengths. Take this one off, clip a new one on, cast it straight out. The rods that I use, these are Shimano Katana surf rods. Now, these are actually quite old, they don't even make these anymore. But um, I've got a 12 foot 6 and I've got a 13 foot. And one of them is an all rounder in CAR, and one of them is a rough ground rod. Now, when you're choosing a rod, depending on what you want to do, would depend on what type of rod you get 12 foot, 13 foot, 14 foot, even 15 foot or multiplier and fixed spool. Now these are fish man with fixed spools. Generally if you're going to be fishing hard ground, rough ground, you just want a stiff rod. That being, you see man, they're quite robust. If you're fishing just clean ground, you go with a lighter rod. Usually when you're picking a rod, you would pick it by casting weight. You might find one, just for example, that would be like a four to six which would be four ounces to six ounces of casting weight. These ones here, they're good for rough ground. The all rounder is a bit of a mix of the both. The rough ground rod has just got a soft enough tip that it shows bite detection and it sits into the waves. I don't know if you can see them up at the top. They're just kind of, they've just got a supple tip in them, but they've got all the power in the rod. Whereas a clean ground rod would just be quite whippy all the way up. The differences that you might find if you're looking for a fixed bowl or a multiplier rod. Fixed bowl rods, generally all it means is they have less eyes and they're bigger. These eyes on the rod here. And that is simply because when the line leaves the reel, it goes through a bigger eye first. And then they're bigger all the way down. Whereas a multiplier rod, they will generally have more smaller eyes. You can use a multiplier rod for a fixed bowl, you can use a fixed bowl rod for a multiplier, but they are made for each other. I'm going to talk really quickly about the shock leader that I use. Now, you'll notice that I've got braid on both of these, both the spin fisher and the affinity. That's a braid main line, and then I have a mono rubbing leader with an FG nut. The mono rubbing leader is not only does it give added abrasion resistance for the part of the line that's going to be nearest the seabed, especially if you're fishing into rough ground, but it's a safety aspect as well. Your shock leader generally wants to be £10 for every ounce of casting weight. So if you're going to be casting 6 ounces of lead, you want a £60 shock leader. It also adds a little bit of stretch. Casting, keep it very simple. When you're starting out, the simplest cast is just an overhead thump cast. That's all I generally do. An off the ground or an overhead thump. That's literally, you just cast straight over your shoulder. I'll show you one of those now. Casting. You can see there, I've got the mono right up to the reel. When you're casting, generally, you want a couple of wraps of your shock leader around your reel. There we can see. And this is going to be casting a fixed ball reel with an overhead thumb. And if you add a little bit of swing in it, what I'll do is I'll try to um, slow it down on the camera so that you can see when it arcs in and it, all you're trying to do is you're trying to load up the rod with the weight. Being that you use the rod to whip your weight and bait out.
There you see the rods loaded up to cast the bait and weight. You don't need anything more complicated than that when you're starting out. This size of reel, this is a 7500. The one on the other rod is an 8000. That generally just tells you how big the spools are going to be, how big the reels are going to be. I like something between a 6000 and an 8000 for shore fishing. Now this being a fixed spool, I'm going to switch it over and I'm going to put a multiplier on and I'm going to show you a little bit of a difference between the two. I generally will be fishing fixed spool reels on my shore fishing, just simply because they are much easier to cast. You don't get as many birds nests, there's less for them to go wrong. Some people will swear by a multiplier, I think the new, the new breed of fixed spool reels you can't fault. Them. So I'll swap this over and I'll talk to you about the reel seat and the reel. There we are, fixed pull, multiplier. <laughs> I don't have to tell you the difference between the two. This is a Daiwa Slosh 20. I use this sometimes fishing from the shore, if I'm fishing for conger eels and things like that. It's a really rough ground. It's got a high, high rate of retrieve. It's bomb proof. I've got a review of this on the Fish Locker Workshop channel. I've got a review of both of these actually. And I'm going to fit this to this rod to show you about the differences. Some of the different rods you'll get they will have different types of reel seats and that is basically that's what the reel puts into this one has an adjustable reel seat and all you'll do is you'll just twist these parts and move it up and down the rod that will that's purely on personal preference generally what you'll find is most people who fish a multiplier reel will fish a multiplier quite close to the base of the rod and that's just so just for ease and convenience of when you're winding and when you're casting like this whereas with a fixed spool I prefer it that type of distance for really that's why I have man set here for casting with this hand that's a comfortable distance and for reeling that's a comfortable distance but it's all just personal preference like I say these ones here all you'll do is you'll twist I've set this in place with some tapes but you'll twist these and move them up and down or you can get other ones that are like uh, called coasters and all they'll be is like a jubilee clamp you clamp your real seat to your rod with. and all you'll do look is twist And there's the reel locked in place. Now I'll run this through the rings and I'll show you about casting them. Casting them, it, it took me an awful long time to be able to cast a multiplier well. I still can't do it as well as others. What I'm going to do is I'll cast it and I'm going to bird's nest it to show you what can happen, why I don't use them as often on the shore. And all that is is that when you cast one of those, the spool stays still. A fixed spool, the spool stays still and you wrap line around it. With a multiplier, the spool moves. When you cast, if you don't stop it at the right time, the spool keeps on moving and line keeps leaving and causing what's called a bird's nest. I'll show you one of those. I'm really good at making them. Exactly the same as before, with the braid, I have a shock leader. So this main line here is maybe about 20 to 25 pound and then I'll have 60 pound shock leader just with the shock leader not there so same principle mono and mono as braid and mono and all I'm going to do is make sure you have a couple of wraps of shock leader onto the reel and I'll show you how casting one of these now I'm not going to put a lot of power behind it because all I'm doing this for is to be able to show you a bird's nest one of the reasons why I don't use these as often as I as maybe other people do. Just as before, loading up the rod with the bait and the weight. If you don't slow it down in time, that is what happens. That is generally what we would call a bird's nest. When people are talking about the bird's nest of the reel, that's what happens. And what you need to do to be able to get it out is you need to be able to pull out all of the old line until it's tight again. It's a 
nightmare of a thing. Also, if you can do this and it gets caught up, quite often what you can have is what's called a crack off. In that your line will come fast around the reel and it won't be able to pay out anymore and it'll snap your line. This is one of the reasons why I don't like using multipliers. When you're trying to pull out a bird's nest, you just need to be really gentle and just try and feed it out where you can. If you pull it too hard with mono, you kink it all up and it all ties in a knot. You just kind of want to gently try and tease it out. So I'm just, just teasing it all out. Because all it is, it's just loops through loops. Now look, I've unravelled it so it's got, till it's all tight and it's all neat. But, have a look, that's how much line I've had to take out. So, now all I need to do is reset it onto the reel. You'll notice that as I'm laying the line onto the reel, I'm putting it on evenly. If you just put it all on in the same place, you end up with a bump in the middle. Some people will go for a, an auto spooling line which has got a little bit of a guide, but I find that they jam occasionally. You just need to make sure that you lean it on all even. When you've got a situation like this and the wind is coming straight into your face and you're casting out into the wind, give me the opportunity to talk about some of the basic rigs that you use. Starting out, you should just always try and think, keep it really simple. If I could give you one piece of advice, it would be learn your basics, learn them well. One from, your ba from the basic fundamentals, you can branch out and experiment from there. There's no point trying to run before you can walk. Casting into the wind, you want a clip down bait. Because if you're going to have to be putting any extra oomph into it, any type of rig that flaps around, your bait's going to end up all smashed to pieces. Or if you've got any like soft baits, like worm, like ragworm or lugworm, if it's not like tightly bound to your hook, as soon as you cast it out and it flails around, it just gets smashed to pieces. So a mark like this as well, where I'm casting as hard like into the wind, like a pulley rig, or an up and over rig, or a clip down rig, anything that's clipped down, that's tight, that's streamlined, so that it flies through the wind. Otherwise, it just flails around. It adds more wind resistance. So your cast doesn't go half as far. This is one of those instances where you should always kind of just Keep an eye out on what's happening. Now today we're supposed to have four mile an hour easterly winds, which would have had the wind coming kind of in that direction. Instead what we have now is we have more like 20 mile an hour southerlies, which coming straight in that direction. What it's meant is it's just meant that it's picked up quite a bit of chop, as you can see down here. when I'm casting straight into the wind so my cast I'm losing 50 yards on my cast I'm only able to get 60 70 yards off it's not really far enough and it's very very cold <laughs> yeah I think that's time to go as it is I'm just gonna fish these baits out for another 10 or 15 minutes and then I'm gonna go Plus, my wife's got a tea on soon, so three quarters of an hour if I can be home, I can have my tea. Just one of them things in it, the conditions weren't what they were supposed to be. There's no point pushing your luck. And there's no point being uncomfortable either. If we do this for pleasure, why be uncomfortable? Even though there weren't any fish to show you, I hope it's been interesting and useful. All the very best, take it easy, see you later.